Hello, my name is Mr. Asprey, and I've got another tricky question for you today. And this one um, I have just recorded as it is part of my uh, 2025 predicted paper one for the Edexcel exams coming up. Um, and I thought it was just such a cracking question. Um, I'm going to release the predicted paper one uh, on the weekend. And, and if you want more, I'm going to create two extra papers, which I will then go over in my live session. So check out my live session, link in the description. Um, I've had really good feedback from last year when I did my live sessions. So I'm really looking forward to these ones coming up in the Easter holidays. And like I say, you get um, two papers and you get me going through them and any questions we don't get time to do in the session, I will release video solutions to those people who have come along. Okay, right, let's get into this tricky, tricky question. Okay, a really lovely question here. These implicit differentiation questions do tend to be very nice. Um, okay, so we've got a function, got the sketch of it as well, and it says k is a positive constant greater than one. Okay, that's useful to know. Um, find dy by dx in terms of x and y. Beautiful. So, uh, we're gonna differentiate this function with respect to x. Now, if we are differentiating a function of y with respect to x then that's a bit tricky what we really want to do <laughs> make it much easier is if I differentiate with respect to y that's nice and easy but these two things aren't equal now to make them equal we multiply by dy by dx so that this cancels out there and now these two parts uh, left hand side and right hand side of the equation are equal so what does that mean for us it means that if we are doing implicit differentiation um, all we need to do is just differentiate a function of y and then multiply it by dy by dx. Okay, so in this instance, that means when we differentiate uh, y cubed with respect to y, we just get 3y squared, but we have to multiply it by dy by dx um, as we are differentiating with respect to x, not y. Okay, next one, um, minus 2x, well that is a function of x, so that just differentiates uh, normally, and that is just minus uh, 2x. Uh, and then the next one is a product. Um, so we can use the good old product rule. We can say u is 4x squared, and we can say v is equal to y. Um, so differentiating uh, this one, well that's just a function of x, so that just goes to 8x. Differentiating this one, um, gives us, well, y differentiates to 1 in respect to y, and then times it by dy by dx, so we just get 1 lots of dy by dx. So doing the product rule means that we need to cross multiply here and here, and then add the two together. Um, so this is going to give us 8xy, and it's going to give us plus 4x squared dy by dx. And that's equal to the right-hand side differentiated. Well, k is a constant, so it's going to differentiate to 0. Okay, perfect. Now, the trick here is you're going to want to um, collect up the dy by dx's uh, on one side. So bring them all together. And then any term without dy by dx goes over to the other side. So the minus 2x moves over to become just 2x. And the 8xy moves over to become minus 8xy. We can then factorize um, to get uh, 3y squared plus 4x squared. Um, and that's equal to, again, 2x minus 8xy. And then we can divide through. Um, to get our dy by dx that we want in terms of x and y. So it's this over this. Uh, perfect. Okay, that is good. Job done. Uh, five marks. That is that is generous um, for what's quite a kind of methodical process. Okay, um, let's grab some space and do part B. Okay. Point, uh, part B says the point on C, the point P lies on C, uh, given that the normal to C at P has the equation y equals x, as shown in figure 2, find the value of k 
interesting. So let's look then at the only relevant part of the graph, which is at P. Um, so what do we know about the gradient at P? Because we do have dy by dx. So what do we know about the gradient? Well, if the normal is y equals x, then it means the normal gradient is equal to 1. So which means the tangential gradient is equal to the negative reciprocal of that, um, which is minus 1. So therefore, the dy by dx at p should equal minus 1. So we can say that 2x minus 8xy over 3y squared plus 4x squared should equal minus 1. OK. Um, what else do we know at p? Well, at p, um, it's also on the line y equals x. So that means that at p, the y coordinate equals the x coordinate. Um, so whatever p is, it could be 3, 3, uh, or 4, 4, or whatever, whatever. But we do know the y equals the x. So we can use that to our benefit. So in fact, what we could do is we can swap out all the y's for x's. Um, so xy becomes x squared. Um, this becomes 3x squared, and then plus 4x squared, like so. And that's equal to minus 1. Um, OK, perfect. So we get 2x minus x squared. Uh, and then this on the bottom is 7x squared. Times it up here becomes minus 7x squared. Um, and we could bring all the stuff over to the right-hand side. So add the 8x squared um, gives us 1x squared. And minus the 2x gives us 2x. Now... Um, we can solve, so we can get um, x, x minus 2. So x equals 0 or x equals 2. Now, um, it must be x equals 2 because obviously x equals 0 is there and it's not, it's not there, is it? So it's definitely x equals 2. Um, which means the coordinate for p, as we said, the x and the y are the same, so it must be 2, 2. Um, Great. Now, how does that help us find k? Well, what we know is the curve, which we um, is c, we know it passes through p. So we know that 2, 2 satisfies the equation of the curve. So I just need to sub in to the, uh, the curve now uh, to find the value of k. Um, so again, at p we have that the curve um, y cubed, so 2 cubed, minus x is also 2, plus 4 times 2 squared times 2 is equal to k. So this is 8 minus 4 plus um, 32 uh, equals k. Uh, so this is 36 is equal to k. Perfect. Cracking question that, absolutely love that.